What's up everyone, Brendan here, and in today's episode of Gaming Details, we're going to be taking a look at some of the Elder Scrolls games. The Elder Scrolls is a collection of action role-playing games mainly developed by Bethesda Softworks, who have also created popular games like Fallout, Doom, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, as well as many others. The series made its debut in 1994 with its release of The Elder Scrolls Arena. We've come a long way since then, with the latest game in the series being Elder Scrolls VI, which is currently still in development. Now, I personally started off by playing Skyrim, and it's without a doubt one of my favorite games of all time. The graphics, the combat, the story, the dragons, all of it was plenty enough to suck millions of players, including myself, into the game and spend days upon days leveling up, completing quests, grinding for Daedric armor, and exploring the vast and incredible world of Skyrim. In this video, we're going to revisit some of the Elder Scrolls games and take a look at the details that you might not have noticed before, so let's get started. For our first of many details in Skyrim, next time you're wandering through the woods, look for a tree stump. If you look close enough, you might find one that has ants crawling on it. You can't interact or do anything with them, but this is a great display of attention to detail, because a forest in real life would be home to all sorts of insects. This next detail takes us over to Morrowind. You'll notice that in the game, your character, as well as some NPCs, will cover their face when looking in the oncoming direction of an ash storm. Once you look away from the storm, your character will bring their arm back down. For a game that came out in 2002, this is a really neat detail they added, as it shows it would be pretty uncomfortable to have any sort of debris blowing in your face at such high speeds. Our third detail takes us over to Oblivion. In the game, go outside of the Imperial City. You'll notice that one of the signs pointing towards Kvatch, one of the first places you find an Oblivion Gate, has what looks like claw marks on it. This is a bit of foreshadowing as the player will soon be encountering Daedra. Heading back to Skyrim, next time you use a pyromancy spell, try aiming it at some water. You'll notice that it will start to boil soon after hitting it with some flames. The amount of attention to detail in this one really makes me appreciate the time the developers spent to put in subtle things like this, knowing that not everyone will even know it's there. You've probably looked at this map of Skyrim and Cyrodiil a hundred times, but you have probably never paid attention to the cartographer. The map for Cyrodiil was created by Natalia Draveril in 433-3e. The map for Skyrim was created by Natalie Draveril in 182-4e. Natalie must be the descendant of Natalia, who stayed in the cartography business. In reality, this is probably a reference to the real-life Natalia Smirnova, who is credited as the sole interface artist for both Skyrim and Oblivion. For this next detail, head over to Whiterun and find a killable NPC. We specifically used Farangar. Attack them, and once they die, wait a few days in game and head over to the Hall of the Dead. Once there, look around and you will be able to find a burial urn with their name on it along with all of their belongings. On to the next detail, we're loading up the Elder Scrolls Online. The Necromancer in this game has the ability to spawn a Skeletal Mage, and rather than having just one model, it can spawn based on different races in the game. As you can see, this image displays the multiple different races that the Skeletal Mage can spawn as. On the left we have an Argonian, in the middle we have Khajiit, and on the right we have a humanoid. I think this is a cool detail because the developers acknowledge that there's multiple different species that could be mages. Once again in Skyrim, you'll notice that after slaying a dragon, if you look very closely at the world map and the location you're in, you can actually see the glow from its withering carcass. This is very hard to see and has likely gone unnoticed by many, however, this is quite literally a small detail that caught our attention and we thought it was pretty cool. While still in Skyrim, see if you can find Ulfur the Blind. When you search his belongings, you'll notice that he has a book, and within that book, there are no words written in it. This is of course because he is blind, although it doesn't make much sense for him to have a book in the first place unless it was written in braille, but I guess the developers could only show so much detail with the graphics at the time. I still give them points for effort. On to our final detail for Skyrim, if you stand near a dead body with your weapon out and a guard is nearby, he might ask you if it was you who is responsible for the death of the person you are standing around. This is a great detail as it shows the NPCs almost having awareness of what's going on in the world around them. Well that's it for today, I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching our videos and leaving your comments on them as well as hitting the like button. And of course to our subscribers, we appreciate you all so much and it means the world to have your support. Stay tuned to our channel to keep up with our latest videos, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend watching Hunter's web series videos. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestion in the comments below on which games we should do next, as well as leaving a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you all in the next video.